Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is Wildlife Division Chief Jeb Williams. Uh, deer season's about a week away. Uh, Jeb, more licenses this year. What can hunters expect? Well, the, for the individual hunters that drew licenses early on in, in, the, in the, the summer, I guess, as far as the first step goes, um, an increase of, of license numbers from last year, about 10,000, so more more deer on the landscape, going to be some more hunters in the field this year, and we're hopeful for a good year. We're seeing some good increases of, of numbers in both white-tailed deer and mule deer in the western part of the state, and so we're uh, feeling good that we're going in the direction that we are. Okay, let's talk about the white-tailed deer numbers, Jeb. Uh, how are they looking? Last, so, so last year, one of the, one of the things about... Uh, sometimes a, a little bit tougher winter is it does give us the ability to complete our surveys and so we uh, completed just about a hundred percent last year of the white-tailed deer winter white-tailed deer survey units and that gives the department uh, some really good opportunities to look at numbers and compare those numbers from previous years and and moving forward and uh, as far as license setting goes as well so saw some really good things uh, I mean we know we've been pretty conservative these last number of years trying to build deer numbers back in some of the areas you know this year issuing right around 65,000 licenses and we were kind of kind of stagnant, stagnant the last couple of years, right around that 55,000 mark and being pretty conservative. And so we felt this last year was, was the right time to, uh, to, to increase those numbers up and be a little bit more aggressive, especially when we had the data and the, uh, the survey information that we were able to collect last winter. And the reason we were able to collect that information is because there was snow on the ground. Yeah, the, the, like we talked about, sometimes it's a double-edged sword having that much snow, and, and you do need a fair amount. Uh, we usually like to see that 10 to 12 at minimum on the level to be able to accurately survey deer uh, from the air. If, if it gets to be too brown and combination of white and brown out there when those flights are being done, it's, re it's really hard to detect and see deer uh, with that on the landscape. But if you have an all-white landscape, of course, it gets to be quite a bit easier. Uh, let's talk mule deer. Your crews just finished their fall aerial mule deer survey. Correct, yeah. So talking about mule deer, it's, uh, the flip side of that, we don't want any snow. Um, we want the leaves off the trees and don't want any snow. And, and so the, uh, the, actually the October snowstorm a little bit uh, actually got in the way of that a little bit in some of the areas south of Medora where there was still a little bit of snow left, but not much anyway. But there was an observation by, our, by the crew. But uh, So some real preliminary results are that things look pretty good again in mule deer country. One of the main focuses, of course, of our fall mule deer survey is looking at reproduction, how things fared, and it looks very simil similar to last year, uh, which is good, you know, about 80, 80 uh, fawns to, you know, per 100 uh, adults does. And so, you know, that that's pretty good when you talking about mule deer country and, and with our numbers increasing, staying at that at, at that rate is a good thing for mule deer populations moving forward. So we feel pretty comfortable with the, with the early results that came from the mule deer survey. Let's talk about your long-term goals for, for deer management. Uh, you guys do it in a five-year increments. Explain, Correct. explain that process. Correct, yeah. So, I mean, that's one of the things we, we feel it's important to involve the public in that process. Um, you know, we use a variety of different tools and factors to look at that, but obviously involving the public as far as, you know, what they feel are, are, are realistic goals and uh, comfortable. So it's something that we always take out to advisory board meetings and provide opportunity for comments when that's up. And so after next year, that five-year segment's going to be up. Um, the current five-year goal right now is 75,000 licenses. Um, that's not something we have achieved in this five-year period. I, it, it's hard to predict whether we will have uh, 75,000 licenses next year at this time. I, my guess is probably not, but uh, it, it's a benchmark that the department uses, and uh, obviously there are some things in our control and some things that are not in our control to be able to either get to that number or not get to that number or maybe even surpass that number. So it's just, just some guidelines for the department to have, which we appreciate the public interaction with that process. What's it going to take to reach that goal, Jeb? Well, we're, again, about, you know, a year out, and uh, this year issuing right around 65,000 licenses. Um, number one, I mean, it would, it would take a really nice winter. Uh, we, we are still controlled a fair amount by winter, uh, you know, on the landscape in North Dakota. And so that, I mean, that obviously does play a, uh, have a big impact on what it looks like for a, for a year period of time. Now, talking about 
more years ahead of that, then obviously you talk about habitat. You know, you talk about the needs of deer, both mule deer and white-tailed deer, as far as what what those drivers are, as far as keeping more deer on the landscape. And so, but from a from a year perspective, really winter weather is uh, you know something that can play a, a pretty big role when you're talking about that short period of time. Okay, let's talk about the weather we've recently had. It's it's wet out there. How is that going to play into the deer season? Well, I think it's going to play in into deer season in a variety of ways. Uh, as as you alluded to, Mike, I mean, this is as crazy as fall as I can re I can remember living in North Dakota and and working for the department and uh, a lot of stressors on the landscape out there for the farming community right now. I mean, I, you know, it's it's really too bad to see. We had a good year, most moisture wise, summer, um, you know, spring, summer, fall. Um, and then for those folks to not be able to get at that that harvest, uh, I mean that, that's really frustrating for them, obviously. And so, from that aspect, I, there's no doubt there's going to be some standing crops out there. I, you know, I don't know how much. You know, a lot of that's going to be dictated here in the next couple of weeks by weather patterns. But there's going to be a lot of standing crop out there. We know that the road conditions are are very uh, dicey in a lot of places, and so people are going to need to continue to be respectful of that situation and. And, and also just understanding there's, there's probably going to be a lot of harvest activity going on right during deer season as well. And so um, it's going to be, going to be it, it has been a fall and it's going to be a continued fall to make sure that people are taking extra care of those landowner sportsman relationships because there's some stressors out there, no doubt. So just be respectful. Absolutely. Okay, any new rules or regulations this year, Jeb? Well, I think and talking about some new rules and regulations, chronic wasting disease definitely comes into the discussion. Uh, we've added two different units and then up in the Northwest, 3A1 and 3B1, where, t where there was positive detections last fall and, and last winter. And then now, actually, we just uh, just a few weeks back announced that 4B in the Badlands also is, in, uh, is now a CWD positive unit. However, that is not added to our proclamation, uh, CWD proclamation for those same rules and regulations. Our standard process has been on that is that we will have discussions and, and, and add that unit uh, to those rules and regulations the, the next year, but not during the year, especially when we're so close to the actual hunting season. If you haven't received your deer license in the mail, what's the reason, Jeb? Well, more than likely, it's due to the fact that you probably have not purchased your general game and habitat license. And so it, by, by not doing that, you have not received that license, and, and the clock is ticking. And so we do encourage you to uh, get that submitted to us so there isn't a, a stress situation where all of a sudden you realize that you know, deer hunting opens tomorrow or two days, and, and you want that. And, and it's going to be challenged to get that in that short of time frame. So... Um, double check on that and that would be more than likely the reason if you do not have that, uh, if that has not been mailed to you yet. So the deer season should be good this year? We're hoping for a good deer season, good opportunity out there for, uh, again, additional people uh, out on the landscape and then also uh, good deer numbers, as good a deer numbers as we've seen now for quite some time. A lot of good information, Jeb. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. The deer gun season in North Dakota opens Friday, November 8th at noon central time and runs through Sunday, November 24th. For more information on the deer gun season in North Dakota, visit the Game of Fish website at gf.nd.gov. For Wildlife Division Chief Jeb Williams and the rest of the staff here at the Game of Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.